That said, welcome back. All right, welcome back. Freeze our bollocks um, off. <laughs> Uh, as we rejoin our intrepid adventurers, um, we find them on the Isle of Solstice. Uh, after having encountered a uh, harrowing battle between yourselves and your old friend, Sephic Caltro, um, uh, you, you, guys, you guys managed to best, essentially, the remaining members of the Circle of Frost who were uh, guarding um, the Vault of Solstice, or of Grimskull specifically. Um, but while you guys were fighting the Circle, uh, one of them had clasped their amulet and had summoned Oral themselves. Um, and she had sort of formed from an icicle hanging above you. Um, and having to fight through like a constant blizzard, you guys managed to uh, chip the base of the icicle enough to sort of cause it to crash down um, and did battle with her there uh, on the ice. Uh, fortunately, um, <laughs> you guys rolled very well um, and managed to thwart this icy avatar of the winter goddess. Um, but not before she let out a uh, horrific wail that sort of sent the rest of Grimskull uh, cracking and crushing up its foundations. Um, with barely any moments to spare, you rushed into the vault where you found uh, Father Limic, uh, this character that you've heard of through Auralites and other interactions. Um, he... You resembled very much sort of like a um, a, a helmed knight. Um, you ne you didn't get a look at his face, but he had sort of a, a cold rasp to him that sort of like created uh, an icy fog through the slits of his helmet. Um, they seemed to be standing before a an icy podium where uh, his hand had been scribbling to some parchment. Um, uh, you guys had made your demand for the Code of Steel of the White, and he just gave it up, um, saying that uh, the work that he had come here to do has been done, and you can take the Code of Steel, but it won't stop the winter. Um, but take, taking the book and sort of leaving him to stand there as Grimskull collapses around you, um, you hastily made your way to the entrance, avoiding uh, falling obstacles and debris, um, only to just sort of push out all at once uh, into the icy blizzard of Solstice. Um, you know, in the last few moments, you were able to look behind you after having gathered some distance and see the um, icy skull of Grimskull, this old giant fortress sort of cave in on itself um, sort of exploding into this icy plume that sort of now begins to descend down the mountain um, but you have the codicil of the white this uh, artifact of orals with the power to uh, manipulate ice itself so long as you uh, and, uh, recant the rhyme of the frost maiden which is sort of uh, one of the first major pieces of text that you read when you sort of reef through it. Um, you need the Codicil of the White to uh, enter into the Regged Glacier where um, uh, your fellow uh, ghost has informed you is where Yethrin is most likely buried. Uh, the ghost of Nas Lantimir. All right. Do we um, have a direction? Uh, so you are still on Solstice. Um, in my notes, you guys had basically just begun making your way down to the docks. Um, Sopo was also with you. You've agreed to sort of take him back as, in reward for him escorting you around the island.
Um, so it's it's really more of a question if there's anything you'd like to accomplish here on Solstice before you head to the pier and summon Angajuk. I don't think we have any remaining plans here, so. No, the fortress has collapsed. There weren't any other points of interest that at least I'm remembering. The, the only other points of interest you may consider are there the number of extraneous shipwrecks located around the island. Um, Sopo had expressed previously that many of these shipwrecks might house pirate gold or other items of note, but in the same turn, they also might posit some danger. Um, I think it would behoove us to return and get away from this place while we can. Well, that is true. It's, uh, what, four days' travel to get back here? <clears throat> if we're gonna look at these shipwrecks, now is the time. But I don't think it's going anywhere, so we could always come back. I don't think days. we have that much time anyway. Either of you is valid. You know, how badly do we need treasure? The question is... is there perhaps something in these shipwrecks, like the previous one, that could uh, be of some good benefit. Some kind of relic, something, I don't know, powerful. Do, do we know anything about these shipwrecks? Are any of these like particularly storied or, or legendary or anything along those lines? Or are these just like random fishing boats? Um... You are not sure. Sopo has based... The, the only information you have regarding them is that Sopo has informed you that you know, many ships have been drawn uh, towards Solstice as a result of Oral's blizzards and have been uh, crushed upon icebergs and rocks. Well, I'll look over to the imp. Uh, you said there's treasure on these ships. Uh, How do you know that? Have you seen anything? Like, what have you seen? Ah, well, uh, I know one was brandishing a pirate's flag. The others are a mix, admittedly. I presume that at least one of them has treasure. Perhaps a few spare coins. <clears throat> Impossible to tell if it's worthwhile. It, it could be, but we could always come back. I don't think they're going anywhere. Lest we have a way to quickly scout them out. Maybe from above? But Zunis has his owl thing. Yes, uh, we, could, we could send her out to scout, I suppose. There's going to be no harm, why don't we do that while we head back? I just feel like we probably won't end up coming back here if we leave now. I think our counter is probably for the best. There might be a nice bow on one of these ships. Or an eye. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. It's true, we need some time to study the tomb. Do that just as easily traveling as well as sitting on a boat. Plus, I think a bit of rest after our encounter in this fortress would be most needed. Uh, I am just only concerned about uh, timing. So far, we've been trying to beat the Oralites to everything that we've encountered so far. I don't want to give them opportunity to get ahead of us, regardless of what they think for. Uh, well, why don't you get your owl to scout those thingies? If he sees anything of interest, then we can investigate it. But for now, we should really head back. Certainly, certainly. Uh, so the snap of his fingers, he summons Gabriel. 
and uh, instructs the owl to fly the uh, outer edge of the uh, island or iceberg or whatever this is. Okay. To point out any wrecks, structures, enemy encampments. I mean, anything of note other than just empty, snowy landscape. I'll probably take like a day in of itself just to fly around this place. Uh, sure. Um, well, so it's it's basically like half a mile of slowly trekking these uh, icy crags to make it back to the giant steps before the docks. So that's plenty of time for the owl to start making cursory swoops around the rest of the island. Um, in fact, you know what? I'll, I'll go ahead and just reveal the island itself. Ooh. Is it going to be shaped like a skull? Oh, no, it's a snowflake. Uh, well, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say like 50% is probably a good zoom. But oh, um, I'm, at, I'm at 36 on this sucker. Yeah. <laughs> But so th this is where you encountered uh, the ghost of Nass. Um, uh, north here in this circle is where you encounter the uh, garden of creatures that had been frozen alive. Um, and then sort of around this perimeter is where you had seen the icy sculptures that were not frozen creatures. Um, but you can see at, at various points along the uh, spokes of the island are additional sort of shipping vessels. Yeah. And uh, the uh, port, I'm assuming, is where Volg is sitting right now? Yeah, so this this is the docks. Yeah. Um, so you could reasonably explore, like, these two ships before heading back. Or, or you know, any of them, really, if you take a fancy. Uh, what well, do you got? Here, you would argue with doing the ones that are at least close, but I just want to go out of that way to just <clears> get all the other ones. Yeah, and we can certainly get these two without too much fuss. The, the water gap here isn't too terribly much of an obstacle for us. We can swim that with, wa that with water breathing. How much of the owl could actually explore the ship itself? Check for any uh, dragon roast, uh, roosting. <laughs> <laughs> that usually indicates uh, more more treasure. Do you want the dragon to be there? As long as it doesn't freeze us into icicles. Um... Yeah, it's up to it's up to Sean. I wouldn't expect him to do much more than just a flyby, though. Um, how reasonably can you control the actions of the familiar? I can't. I can just uh, communicate to them telepathically over a mile, up to a mile. So it's basically okay. just, you know, instructions. Gotcha. Um. Well, I mean, that, that would be within a mile. Um. Uh, just tell it to look for the shiny, shiny. <laughs> I would, I would say, you know, probably at, at at this stage in the adventure that you probably have formed a pretty close bond with your familiar, and that it, it might be more willing to do actions beyond the scope of like a normal animal. Yeah, so you, you could use your familiar to sort of survey and scope out those two vessels. Okay, so let's let's say after you know, like I said, probably I'm guessing it probably took a solid day just to survey the entire, not survey per se, but just a flyby of the whole place. Yeah, that would, that would probably take a, a decent bit of time. Like, you guys uh, had entered Grimskull in the morning, 
Uh, and by the time you make it back to the docks, it's probably going to be like, you know, peaking into afternoon. Alright, so general overview, and then we'll rest for the evening, and in the morning she can scout the more specifics. Okay. Not pretty good. Um, and actually that first day, just knowing that there's ships here, we could probably check these out while the owl is scouting one of the mo other ships in more detail. I don't want to leave everything to the owl, because that's just not fun, but... <laughs> It's safe. It's uh, safe, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you what the owl sees for the first two boats, then. Um, the first boat, uh, the one that is closest, um, uh, each of each of these vessels is, is no larger than like um like a sloop or a brigantine. Like the, the Dark Duchess, the the ship that you explored that had the dragon in, is probably you know the the largest vessel you've seen while you've been stuck here in the Icewind Dale. Um all of these are much smaller than that. You know, maybe two floors most. Um But as as the as Gabriel sort of flies in and sort of uh, starts to take, you know, cursory swoops around this first vessel. Um, it, it certainly seems to have hailed from Luskin. There are tatters of a Luskin flag um, uh, hanging from the mast. Uh, but many of the sails have been, just, like, ripped through our utter tatters. Like, this this vessel must have been here for quite some time. Um, but, um... As, as sort of the owl sort of uh, swoops in, um, uh, hands immediately sort of rise up and reach from from inside the brig. So you know, like how there's sort of that, that wooden lattice that a lot of ships have. Like a lot of hands just start reaching up and trying to pry at Gabriel. Um, a lot of, like, a lot of uh, moans and groans just issue out of the hidden deck. Uh, it definitely seems that there's like a multitude of creatures there in the first ship. And then Zinus would tell us this. It seems that there's a fair bit of uh, an undead issue on one of these boats. A literal skeleton crew. Feel, feel sorry for the, the crew. Whatever caused that could not have been pleasant. Um, the, the second vessel, though, is uh, in a much better state. Um, the, uh, the ship actually seems to brandish a uh, Neverwinter flag. Um... It's got, you know, uh, finely trimmed wood carvings upon its rails. It's got a mermaid figurehead, ironically enough. Um, much of the crew uh, is gone. There seems to be barely any remnants of this vessel's uh, former inhabitants. Um, but in the cargo hold, um, as the owl sort of swoops in and has a moment to look around, um, it seems that there's a large amount of cargo, sort of, uh, all sort of rocked onto one side of this ship. Um, but amidst the cargo is a, uh, very fancy looking chest, um, trimmed with, uh, gold, um, and with a very formidable lock, sort of keeping its contents hidden away. But, uh, this other ship, uh... From what Gabriel tells me, it could be quite promising. Some kind of uh, lacquered or, or fancy chest, uh, it's called. It does not seem that there's uh, much in the way of danger. Probably misleading, but it's better than zombies, right? <laughs> I suppose so. It seems like the safest bet. I suppose I don't have reason against checking it out. 
We fought yeah. worse than zombies as well. Yeah, yeah. Really, really, the only danger is that it's like 200 feet next to the other vessel. So they're like right. They're they're pretty close. Wandering zombies. <laughs> Zomboid moment. I was just about to say. Just have to be careful. You have to be careful and alert, as always. But, uh, daylight is moving. daylight is dying. We should move while we can. All right, then let's get going. Time to waste. Special steeds and cart appear, and we get going, at least to the shoreline. <laughs> As a reminder, this is an every single day thing forevermore, so just assume that that's always on. Can the steed cross water? I presume Ooh, so. No, we're just getting to the shoreline. We get to swim after that. Um, oh, I, I, I had assumed as you were making these observations that you had already sort of arrived back at the docks. That's what I was presuming. That we're on our way. Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. we still have to travel from the docks to a closer shoreline. Yeah, last time we left off, we had traveled to the docks at the end. Okay. And I mean, it's only it's only like you know six hundred feet. It's not terribly far. But you're you're welcome to some of the steeds if you just want to roll a style. Of course, you <laughs> always roll a style. I mean, come on. <laughs> you? More, I'm more, like more to the point. Six hundred feet of Arctic frozen waters versus you know two hundred fifty feet of frozen Arctic waters is a probably a little more uncomfortable for the other folks. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, yeah, so you can summon up your sled and spectral seed, or steed. Um, Steve. It, give, give everyone the mounts that they need to sort of uh, tarry over there. Um, so now you are sort of, you know, as spectral close as you can probably get. Just like, spectral like, steed right is now officially named Steve. <laughs> spectral Steve. 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 Minecrafts. Yeah, so I guess, I guess the... Oh, so you all have water breathing now? Yeah, that that's something I've been casting every morning since I learned it. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, in that case, you're all able to swim. Are you just able to cast that like without using a spell slot? It's a ritual, yeah. That's, that's the real benefit of wizards is our out-of-combat stuff. Uh... Who doesn't have cold resistance? Paul uh, and your and myself. All right. Yeah, because like, you you're, you're going to be dipping into yeah freezing water. Yeah. Um, and, and just roll that for the text just to see if that'll actually work. <laughs> I'm curious as to whether or not this actually like will go over water or if it's only solid ground. Um, uneven terrain, up and down stairs, slopes and the like, but it can't cross an elevated change of ten feet or more. Can't do deep pits, but it doesn't say anything about water. I, so I would so imagine a floating disc would be able to go over water. Okay, so whoever whoever's a, a wimp and can't take a little bit of a chill, feel free to hop on. Yurk will hop on begrudgingly. <laughs> it's a small little thing. It's only three feet wide, so you're you're sitting on a bar stool. But uh, right. I was gonna say, I can fucking call out the little things you stand on. They got wheels on, and you like use your weight to move them. <clears throat> Same way. No, it's a sex without the sort of like handlebar. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know what they're called, but they're they're weird and they have a tendency to blow up. Oh, is the, the, are those the hoverboards? You yeah, probably oh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's those things. <laughs> um. Yeah, and we'll we'll just say that like you know Hal Halden's just gonna probably stay behind. Um. He's gonna just you know have a solemn moment to himself.
Uh, but yeah, you can sort of ride the floating disc while everyone else uh, just, just laps. <laughs> goes through the water. Zunas just like slips into the water with like without a single ripple, just like unnaturally, like an unnatural diver. <laughs> um, so you'll bypass the extreme cold. Um, yeah, as as you guys, um, so you'll get two different perspectives. So those who are sort of going uh, into the water and are swimming. Um, you know, it, it, it's still somewhat of a rough time, especially basically for everyone except for Zunus. Because um, while you can, you know, breathe underwater, you're still having to struggle with a bit of the current. Um, but the, the, wor the world under ice is, you know, mixed with dark grays and deep blues. Um, it's very reminiscent of your trial Volg that you took. <laughs> um, you can see the underbelly of the two vessels as they're sort of uh, nestled there upon the ice. Um, and the, the one with the undead creatures does have a hole in it. Um, but it does not seem that the creatures have taken much notice because you're not really creating any sound underwater. So you're able to sort of, you know, with a wide berth, most likely, able to swim around that and come around to the other side where, um, you know, you, uh, you are <laughs> able to just sort of uh, float and uh, land on the top of the other vessel. So you make it to the second boat. That's good. <laughs> Remember, uh, do not make too much noise. Try to stay out of sight if you can. Downwind or upwind, I don't know how that works on the surface, but I don't want to get the zombies' attention. One of us per should stay up top just to keep an eye out on things, make sure uh, we have no surprises. <clears throat> well, I'm not exactly stealthy. Eric, you're probably better suited for looking out. Even with one eye. Uh, <laughs> yes. The rest of us will... Uh, the getting closer. The rest of us will head towards the uh, captain's quarters in the hold. See what there is to be found. Not just of material goods, but also like a logbook or something that speaks of the history of this ship. We're going to invade the captain's quarters. Are <laughs> we're uh, uh, after your booty? I am not interested in booty. I don't know what you're looking for, but I'm here for treasure. <laughs> Um, Deserved it. So much, much of, as you entered into the captain's quarters, um, much of it is frozen over. Um, there, there is a captain's log. Um, much of it has fallen to disrepair. For as you enter, there, the the back window has sort of been cracked through, um, and you can see here that much of much of the captain's quarters has sort of become damaged from the, you know, either constant tides of sea salt and ice uh, making its way in. Um, I mean, there there is an astrolabe that looks like it f could fetch a, a pretty penny to any navigators. Um, apart from that. Uh, there are sort of the remnants of what might have at one point been luxurious furs. Um, uh, using Detect Magic, um, the ornate chest in the cargo hold definitely gives off a powerful um, uh, radiant aura. 
within your sight. Not radiant magic, but, you know, just, just yeah. the glow. Uh, I'll be careful. The chest is, uh, or either the chest or what's in it is uh, magical. It's, it would be dangerous. I instantly remember that none of us are particularly good at lockpicking. <clears throat> or detecting traps or anything of the sort. I think one of you has knock, though. <laughs> I do, I do have knock. But see, the problem with using knock, as our Sorry. as our DM so so graciously reminded me of, is the fact that it would alert those Zimzams. There's a, there, there's a decent possibility that it might. It's, it's wow! I can't believe the DM recommended that I use knock. That's and you crazy. also, you also have silence too. Yeah, you could you could silence and then knock. Wait, I have I I think I believe I totally forgot I had silence. <laughs> no, I don't have silence. At least not that I'm. Do I? Where Maybe I'm thinking cross campaign. You might be thinking cross campaign. Uh, I have too much D and D in my head. Uh, the D and D is taking over your brain. Um, let's see. So we are at this chest currently. Sorry, I've been kind of spacing out a bit. Um, yep, it's got a very thick lock on it. What's the lock look like? Uh, it's very. It's a very heavy iron padlock. Encrusted with uh, bits of gold. Bits of gold? Okay. Yeah, like, like even Lauren, the lock seems like it could fetch a price. Lawrence brandishes the massive golden like key that we got from the giants. <laughs> okay. Does this fit the chest? <laughs> no. <laughs> does, my, does my crowbar fit in the padlock? You know, I don't even care about defeating Oral at this point. I just want to know what this key goes to. <laughs> Already putting out a crowbar while I wait for the, the spellcasting people to do something. <laughs> okay, well, it's either this. We, uh, I have nothing that we can lockpick with. I don't have, like, thieves tools. So we either use knock and fight the Zimzams, or you use your crowbar and beat the shit out of it. Knock. Okay. He's knock. knock. We can we can deal with him. All right. Um, Zombies don't swim. Knock, 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 and I'll have famous last words. There you go. the thing. With a snap of his fingers, like Lawrence puts his arm arm over his right, like wrist, and just snaps. <laughs> We all immediately cover our ears as the sonic boom snap reverberates through the hall. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I mean, the lock opens, of course. Um, <clears throat> with a with a loud rusty <clears throat> sort of uh, <laughs> unlocks. Um, but inside, you find a tremendous amount of treasure. Um, uh, specifically, you find, uh, this much. Ooh! Well, not bad. Like, you, you open it up, and it's basically, you, you get the glow from, like, Pulp Fiction, where all these coins are reflecting light at you. Um, but seated on top is, uh, what looks to be a very ornate trident. A trident. <clears throat> yeah, indeed. Um, it seems to be fashioned about... A it, it's fashioned out of a metal that has not rusted. Um, and the, the three spokes that form uh, the one end of the trident seem to have been carved out of pearl. Here, I thought you were going to say aquamarine. <laughs> Out of character, is a trident a uh, martial weapon? Mm-hmm. I'll get fucked the rest of you. 
be a big ass chest of a trident was fitting in there. Yes. It is a remarkable construction. Let me take a look at that. Do you think I could Scrooge McDuck into this tress chest? <laughs> Just slam your face against it, I presume. You try. Um, but as a result of that knock, Yurik, you on top hear a cacophony of voices coming from the other boat. Voices like speaking voices or like as moans in, and groans? As in moans and groans. Um, you definitely, definitely hear a stir coming from that direction. I think I'll just quickly retreat to the group and inform the horde has been alerted. So it's either fight or we get out of here. Quickly, uh, is there anything else to be found here? I'm assuming we would have looked for all that other stuff first before opening the chest, like logbooks and such. Um, there is a smaller chest. Um, looks to be about you know, uh, textbook size, maybe you know five inches in height. Um, it's got it's got a little bit of weight to it, um, and certainly if one of you used both of your hands. Uh, you could carry it. Um, Alright, soon, soon as I'll grab the trident for now, just to keep a hold of it. Also very thematic. Yeah, that's uh, what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, Vogue, uh, 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 just take this for now. Go sure. <clears throat> just holds up with arms. Uh, it shows a uh, small, small chest in your, into your chest. Dum bum. Like, uh, we sh we should go. Boric, we're leaving. Bye bye me. And he scampers, like, just waving everyone down to the water on the, the opposite side of the boat from the zombies. All right. Um. Uh, as as you uh, quickly jump into the water, um, and I, and you're, you get back onto the, the floating disc. Um. You, you see a, a horde of what looks to be ghouls uh, crawling out from the first boat um, and hastily making their way onto the second, just as you guys sort of leave in time. Um, of course, they they don't really notice the three underwater at first. They notice you, Yurik, though. Um, so you, you immediately get sort of like a rush of four that sort of uh, come up to the railing and extend their arms out, uh, making unfortunate wails and groans. As you can see, uh, much of their mouth and teeth have sort of rotted. Um, but in this sort of maddened state, a few even sort of like make the jump into the icy waters themselves. Um, and those of you who are sort of swimming through the currents can see behind you as uh, shapes plunge into the icy depths. However, it seems that none of these creatures can swim very well, and they just begin to sink. Uh, oh, I'm morbid. <laughs> uh, but fortunately for yourselves, you are able to uh, make it back to the shore, dripping in ice-cold water. Um... Such in a way that, like, as soon as you sort of uh, make it a few paces, you're already sort of uh, host to a number of icicles. <laughs> Let's swim. I mentioned I hate swimming. I don't mind it in warmer climates. 
Is everyone okay? No one is uh, turning white or anything like that? I'm already white. looks at himself. His red skin. <laughs> no fingers are turning blue. At least not yet. Ah, that is good then. Uh, we should head towards the dock. Uh, summon the tur- uh, was it turtle? Was it whale? Whale. Uh, it summons hey, hey. A, summons a whale, and we can examine the findings while we wait for it. Unless you guys want to check out some other boots. There we go. you guys. Got a box of gold. <laughs> yeah, you got a pretty like, good score it's... already. This is true. <coughs> like, like, men of knowledge me are screaming that, that the best treasure is on the furthest away boat. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Got an idea. We still have Mr. Professor in a jar, right? Professor uh, Scant? I don't think I don't think you have Professor Scath. You do have NASA's orb though. Um so that was like the same idea though, right? It was like a Yeah. When we settle down, I would love to consult them about the tome we found. See what they know about it. Uh the codicil? Yeah, see if they know how to use this thing to clear the weather up. Okay. Um, I don't think we have a destination yet, right? The Reghead Glacier, which is where the uh, uh, where Yethrin is supposedly buried or trapped or some such. Do you know where that is? No. Uh, you all would know where the Reghead Glacier is, but um, uh, we'll go ahead and start and say like you you guys you know ring the bell on the docks here. Um, and after, you know, 10 or 20 minutes waiting, Angujuk uh, surfaces, uh, bearing that familiar uh, boat upon its back that you can get in. So, I have arrived. Are you ready to go back to the mainlands? Instead, if you are willing to convey us, uh, you need to go to this... Uh... Glacier, whose name I personally do not recall, but it is very important, so my character would know it. Let me just go back to the map of the Icewind Dale. The Blackhead Glacier. Blah, blah, blah. We'll travel by map. It's the fastest way. Um, the Regged Glacier is uh, this whole block on the far east. Ah, okay. Uh, I heard glacier, I, I assume water bound. So yeah, yes, we will, it, we will go back to land. Miles away. <laughs> miles to go before we sleep. Did we tackle Revel's End? Uh, you have not gone to Revel's End yet. What's there? Uh, the the hook at the the hook at Revel's End was that there is a member of the Arcane Brotherhood there, named Valish Gant, who uh, might have been able to give you some information regarding Yethrin or uh, the Netherese. Um, and what you know is that essentially they had a se- they had intended to stage a coup a long while back, um, involving the uh, speaker of Bryn Shander, uh, but they got caught, and then they got thrown into Revel's End. Could be a potential ally. You're yeah, still alive. I seem to recall you being quite against this plan earlier, a long time ago. Or the idea of that, at least. Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> it's, it was, it's been a little while, but... Um... It, it, was, it was probably more of a priorities thing. We needed to do something else first before we... Uh, Lawrence taps 
his forehead to try to like like that that's his way of like getting the attention of Nas. He taps like his temple or something. Uh you hear Nas's voice answer. Hello? Uh Nas, um do you know anything about Valish Gant? I can't say that I've met him personally. Um but Rumors did spread of his downfall around the Arcane Brotherhood. Was he well respected? Is he uh, perhaps um, amenable as far as people in the Arcane Brotherhood go? Easy to work with? Uh, from what I recall, or at least from what I overheard, he was a bit, he was a bit of an arrogant person. That seems um, to be a common thing with wizards. Meh. Aren't you smart? <laughs> um, but apart from that, he is very skilled in abjuration. Um, he's also, he, I would say he's less... He, he's not the best at abjuration. Um, he was unable to uh, steal that position from the Arcane Brotherhood's current abjurationist. Um, he is more politically minded, I would probably gather. Um, that said, he, he could know something about Yethrin. He has been here for some time. I do not like going in blind. If this one know something that we might find useful, it would be worth it. If nothing else, if the Brotherhood wants him in prison, we shall break him out just on the face of it. N Nass would answer, I, the Arcane Brotherhood does not care for uh, those that have been upended. If, if anything, the Arcane Brotherhood wouldn't care one way or another if Valish Kanch was released from his prison cell. Yes, but it's not about them. The Aurelites don't like him, and we do. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, to some exactly. extent. Fair point. Have we either go to Revel's End, or we just go back to Landfall and uh, make our way across the Dale? Checking on the cities on the way. What do you think, Oric? Hey, can you repeat the question? Revel's End? Go straight across the dale uh, to the glacier, or swing by the cities first? Uh, we should be the closest one, just Bremen. Or is it... it would actually, I don't know. We should technically be closer. Because I could do with replying on some arrows. Resupplying, should I say. It's a good point. Uh... What about the Black Cabin? Really remember what? I think that was just like a small hunting lodge or something. I thought it was an Aurelite like camp. Yeah, I, thought that was the, uh, I thought that was where the moose was. Was the moose this campaign? Yes. yes. <laughs> it was in a The moose. The moose. Yeah, that was somewhere around Lonelywood in the woods. That was our first quest. <laughs> that takes me back. Oh yeah. All right, so to to just to move things along. So let's say we take the whale back to the normal port where we picked it up originally. Mm -hmm. Head over to Bremen, check out the status there. I know that was not one of our favorite towns, but that that might have changed in the time we've been away. It has been more than a week. Since we left with our allies talking to people and trying to swing the vote, so to speak. 
Maybe something has changed politically. We can resupply, yeah, okay. get some potions, get some more uh, rations and the like, get more arrows, etc. Yeah, I think Bremen, and then we can go to Revel's End. Yep. Work for everyone? Sounds good. Alright, it's good to me. Um, so with that, um, Angajuk uh, begins to dip below the surface of the water um, and reform that uh, breathable bubble. And you will guys have will you guys will have three days between now and arriving at Angajuk's bell. Okay, let's crack open the small chest of vague and attune with the Triton Trident to try and figure out what that is. Trident okay. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but it never hurts to, to double check. I'm taking a bathroom break real quick. Just uh, give me the rundown when I get back. Sure. Wait, uh, wait. Presume we're splitting the gold. <laughs> the 3k? Yeah. I think there's a party loot, group treasure and loot. I'm just going to record it there. We can split that up. Uh... Actually, no, that's not a good spot for it. Uh, I'll, I'll just post something in Discord so our missing members know to know to do that as well. 600 split. Yep. Now for some scrolls. Um, we'll start with the trident. Um, uh, first and foremost, this this trident seems somewhat aged. Um, well, it sports some ornateness. It is almost pragmatically simple. Um. The, the 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 shaft of the Triton itself is sort of made of an old um, uh, aquamarine infused iron. Um, it seems to have been touched with properties that prevent it from rusting underneath, you know, in in the brine, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, the well, first and foremost, it is a plus two Triton. Um. And given, I would say, what your character knows about it, um, this this seems to be an artifact that hails from the Twelfth uh, Seras War. Um, it was it was a uh, a sort of event where um, disruptions had sort of uh, pervaded Triton society, caused by an evil megalodon. Um, and while the Tritons had sort of sought to avoid it, um, the Triton eventually, the, the Megalodon soon arrived upon their doorstep and sort of caused this great turmoil. Um, and this is probably the weapon that was used to drive it back, you think. Sort of like a legendary sort of Triton in that sense. Um... Any uh, special pri properties or? Um, it's really just a, a plus two Triton. Okay. It just has a lot of historical relevance. Gotcha. And, and sorry, what was the the name of this? I think you had said this had a specific name. Oh, I, I just said that it was it it hailed from hailed from okay yeah the the twelfth Saras War um or at least around that time oh, well uh, this is a uh, very I'm surprised to see this surface frankly this has a lot of history behind it but. It's a very powerful weapon, but it's, uh, it's just particularly uh, sharp and uh, resistant to decay and 
all the things that you might normally expect of a, a magical weapon. I, it is not in my Ballywick to, to use, however. If one of you would like to uh, go take it up in arms. For reference, this martial trident is a melee weapon that also has a th throwing range of 20 feet, a maximum range of 60. It happens to be a plus 2 trident for 1d6 plus 2 damage. Piercing. Oh, have you you know, something, uh, something with fondness for throwing sticks at people? Have at it, uh. Um, as, as you open the smaller chest, though, uh, you find a few things inside. Um, you find, uh, two potions, a scroll, and a folded up cloak. Okay, in the, the four days' travel, we'll obviously uh, attune and identify all that stuff. Yep. Um, Whatever happened to Nasus Ferret? It's still with you. It's, it's oh. been following along. Um, Just, like, chilling in Lawrence's, like, scarf or coat or something? Sure. <laughs> But wherever you think the ferret would be. Um, uh, the potion, however, the first one is a... Um, it's a concoction of the freehold. Um, it gives you resistance to necrotic damage, and it lasts for one day. Um, we'll go ahead and just post this in sort of like Discord, I guess. Okie dokie. Uh, side effect, your tongue grows much fatter when you drink it. <laughs> oh, they to shut the bottle. Um... <laughs> The, uh... <laughs> um, the other one is a spell riven tonic. It allows you to spew boiling water from your mouth at will. It lasts for four hours. I mean, Lawrence kind of like does it already, but it's like actually scalding water. <laughs> It's just <laughs> side effects you have to pee as soon as you drink it <laughs> <laughs> you know this might have been like a really good potion to have used during that fight <laughs> with oral second form um the scroll is a spell of Scorching Ray. That's always a nice one. Yoink! <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a second level scroll that you... And, and again, you know, like, like with this campaign, anyone can cast scrolls. It's not limited to uh, the class that they were made from, but only, you know, classes that can have that ability can learn them. Um, and then the cloak itself, um, it, uh, it looks interesting. As, as you sort of take the time to unfold it and look over its particular qualities, it's a, it's a dark purple color and hue, um, embossed with, uh, yellow golden trim. Um, and you can see that on the back, there is sort of like a, 
uh, an open maw from which uh, little teeth just um, uh, flatly shift whenever the, the cloth is disturbed. Um, it, is, it is not a cloak of the manta ray. This is something else. Tell um, us what it does. Cloak of the ray manta. Uh, it, it is something you do not attune to, but you can wear it freely. Um, this will probably require arcana. Mm, all right. Let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what this is. So no, this is this is kind of an odd item. Um, this is called a mimic cloak. Um, particularly, it's it's made using the remains of a young mimic. Uh, while wearing it, you can use a bonus action to. Uh, speak a command word uh, to change the style, color, and apparent quality of the cloak. The garment's weight does not change, regardless of its appearance. The cloak can't be anything but a cloak with these properties. Um, however, while you are wearing this cloak, you have advantage on ability checks to escape from a grapple. Um, and then whenever you make the ability check to escape the grapple or free yourself from restraints, the creature or object holding you takes 1d10 piercing damage as the cloak's fabric uh, magically splits into a toothed maw to bite it. I mean, your looks the sound of that cloak. Oh. Uh, and he even has a uh, art with it. So here's what. It, oh. Oop. Get rid of one of those. Yeah, but whenever you, <laughs> whenever, when are you ever in range to be grappled by something? It's more for its chaining properties. Because you could basically hide and hunt things. There you go. Amazing. You can make it look like snow or a tree of a bark, whatever. He beat me to it. <laughs> That's a nifty item. It is. I've never seen it. I like it. So, that sounds very bardic, in my opinion. <laughs> Changing your, your style, the color, and quality of the clothing. Yeah, if someone yeah. gets too close, you just make it bite them. That is, that, that, that is something that would appeal to Lawrence, but you're a good point. We can share it. <laughs> I get to wear it out on the town, and you get to wear it out in the woods. Just make sure you like dry clean it before you give it back. Oh, you get it on weekends. I have it during the week. <laughs> uh, but that is all that you find in the small chest. Okie dokie. Next. What's the name of it? It's a Mimic Cloak. Mimic Cloak. Yeah, you're wearing a dead Mimic. <laughs> it's a weird looking Mimic, but... I mean, he's used to wearing things that are dead, so... Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm gonna yank that. Uh, so apart, apart from taking time to uh, discover what these items are, uh, what do each of your characters do on the three-day journey from Solstice to On the Duke's Bell? Mm, Lawrence is gonna just kind of chill and um, converse with Nas here or there. Uh, maybe play with her ferret and also um, memorize that rhyme in the uh, courtesy of the white. Ah, yes. Um, I will go grab that. Let 
Well, there Dennis is are. easy. He's just studying the tome this entire time. Okay. Yeah, you, you're, you're would just be using the new cloak to hunt things. <laughs> well, they're taking the we're, words. We're in a whale. You can't do that. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought we were. Three, yeah, three to four what, days on whale. What, yeah, this is what you're doing while you're on the whale because it's gonna be three days. Oh, I thought you said we would take three days to get to Bremen. My mistake. Then. No, we just. just Oh, and feel uncomfortable still being on a talking whale. No, we're just chilling and having a having a grand old time. It's a bonding time, y'all, inside the whale. <laughs> on this three-hour tour. <laughs> Florence begins to strum his his lute. Well, continue. Um, sorry. Uh, talk, talking with Nass, you just get some, like, um, she'll, she'll ad admit some details. Like how, um, you know, she was sort of, uh, uh, she was raised in the streets of Am um, um, when she was sort of discovered by the mage who had sort of recognized her talents. And then, you know, from there she was uh, tutored, um, discovered that she had some, you know, greater potential than most fledgling mages. Um, and uh, it was her connection with her tutor that allowed her sort of to get uh, access to the Arcane Brotherhood. I see. So instead of uh, being kind of born into it like that Feline Harpo woman, you uh, have some real well, skill? Talent? There's there's um, what's the word? There's potential there. <clears throat> Yeah, she'll, she'll sort of say, like, yeah, I, you know, I've, I've always sort of uh, lived in the shadows of Amd. If you, if you know anything about it, it's, you know, uh, a city of great wealth and prosperity. But, you know, every, every city has the slums, and that's where I was. Um, but, you know, my, my tutor always told me that I had, you know, uh, a great, my, my stars pointed to a great destiny. Um, but, you know, I guess, uh, you know, not all things were meant to be. Well, we'll see about that, yeah. Lawrence is kind of like, got himself resigned to, you know, hearing all this. He wants to do what he can to fix the problem of, uh, of her uh, being dead. If if we can, it's a big if, but <laughs> um, what what does Volg do on this three day journey? Um, at some point he he knows uh, Yurik doesn't really like talking much, but he's gonna make an effort because Yurik lost an eye in this fight. <clears throat> Uh, just kind of like put up a seat next to him at some point and be like, uh, so what's your, you know, what's the situation with family and stuff? Like, what's the story? Well, I don't know my real parents. I was adopted and, well, the adopted parents died. So I moved up here and started hunting, really. And you remember much about them? Well, they're the ones who taught me to actually hunt, so yes, quite a bit. So, they were human? Yes. Hmm. Don't exactly get on with my own kind. I don't really have their culture in me. No, you don't seem like a... particularly social person, if you don't mind me saying. Never really wanted to be. Hmm. We get on with 
humans and they live a lot less than you, it feels hard to get connected to people. And you're just going to have to move on anyway. What about uh, our little group here? Like, if you're alone, would you miss that? The camaraderie and stuff? Yeah, he just gives a gentle stroke. It's like, well, I've enjoyed it, but I wouldn't mind my own company again. Well, fair enough, but I dare say you might not uh, be still standing there. You know, if you want it alone. I suppose that's fine. You know, at some point, like call over to Lawrence as well. Like, come on, what's your uh, what's your story? You got like rich parents or something, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, kind of put me on the spot now. Yeah, aren't you? Oh, you got like three days to kill. Give me something. Gonna kill it with something. I'm gonna yeah. stare at the wall. Mm. Sounds you're bad. Don't you always talk about yourself anyway? Yeah, we can no. really shut you up at the best of times. We ask you about home life, and suddenly it's nothing. <laughs> it's a bit of an awkward conversation. Uh. Do you remember that fellow we killed, uh... What was his name? I already forgot him. Uh... Been quite a few fellows, let's be honest. Mm. I've lost count. Are talking about, uh, Nerith Max Zildemar? Yes. That Max Zildemar fellow. Well, um... Apparently he was working for... Who, what was it? The Black Company? Mm-hmm. Black Network. Black Network. Uh, the black um, word uh, underground group, you know, the the the. the... <laughs> you can just call him Centaurum as well. That too. Well, anyhow, it's, uh, it would appear as if the, that Maxildemar fellow had it out for me. Uh, Ever since I left home. Maybe not directly, but um, I do come from a rather important family back home. Are uh, you we a... act... Oh, go on. Are you a prince? Uh... <laughs> oh, prince are, are, are you going to answer that? Me not answering is really damning in itself. You guys are really putting me on the spot. <laughs> But to answer your question, uh, yes, I, I am. It's it's all very convoluted. I uh, technically a royal bastard. Uh, my father didn't think my brother was, uh, well, the leadership type. He didn't like that. So my mother told told me to, well, flee to the north. And apparently they found me here. I'm trying to. <laughs> Cut up loose ends or something. Yes, and apparently I... I'm loose ends. Yes. I don't know what I'm going to do when and if I go back home. I mean, you're, uh, you're speaker for... Well, you were speaker for that town that's not there anymore. Uh, but, you know, you've got, like, a foothold in the politics here. Could probably, uh... Clear yourself, Prince, or something when this is all done. <laughs> yes, though, I don't, I don't know if a life of that sort of responsibility would fit me. Well, I had an inkling, but I guess that confirms it. I guess all the uh, tea drinking and whatnot gave it away, the taste in finer clothes. Um, yes, the extended pinky and the silly little wave you do at people. Lawrence just kind of huffs. I just thought he was pompous, to be honest. He is bad. We're not all pompous, we're flamboyant. We have to be showy, you know. They're literally like the same thing, aren't they? I kind of, Well, 
I wouldn't say so. so. I think pompous implies a bit of uh, arrogance or uh, snootiness. Never really liked it. Again, people are kind of annoying. Well, I was. Oh, go on. Sorry. So say it's quite a mishmash of characters we've got here. Quite an ensemble. Well, I mean, I thought it was going to be a very good job when I was sort of told to help. No, you're a hero of the entire area. It's a bit weird. To be honest with all of you, I was really just in it for the um, the muscle. What do you mean, Vogue specifically? Uh, uh... <laughs> 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 well, 